Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome back to the castle. So, following the front gate last time, I thought we'd fortify the back gate somewhat this time and put a security checkpoint in here. So, we'll start off with another set of castle doors. These are in USO. Don't snap to anything, so they're nice and easy to position. Added quite a while ago. So, we're just going to grab that with a concrete pillar. Just quickly double check there that I can actually sink the pillar in. Which is all going fine. So, grab that, take a quick look at the existing set of doors, make sure we know how they're attached so we can match this particular setup. And then just line it up and slide it into place, nice and easy. So the idea behind this one is uh, not to go quite as heavy on the fortifications as we did last time, just make sure that guards can sort of cover the approach and make it a little bit more subtle than the front gate was. So, we're going to build a sort of checkpoint inside, kind of a guard post, I suppose. This uh, junk fence is going to form the, the starting point. It's sort of where the desk would be if there was enough space to actually put a desk in here, but there isn't, so... Just group select that in. I've chosen a flat-topped one, so we haven't got the um, planks sticking up, getting in the, in the way for the uh, guard who will eventually be stood here. It needs to be a little bit lower down, so it's uh, comfortable to see over. And onto a, a chain link side gate because it's nice and low profile, so it'll fit in the gap. The idea is to keep this pretty thin because we've got an enclosed, very tightly enclosed space rather. So again, just grab the group select. You can use the automatically closing door here because it's much easier. Sadly, that castle door won't automatically close, but there we go. So just nudge that up so it clears the step, and there we go. Over to Toys Out of the Param's Pillars and Supports. There's a few vertical boards in here. There's sort of single width ones and these triple ones. There's varying sizes, so... Matter of picking the one that'll actually cooperate best, because a couple of them are a little awkward. This one's not too bad, and it's reasonably tall as well. Sadly, it doesn't quite reach to the roof, but... that will make do with what we've got. It's supposed to look like a kind of improvised structure, so... And... One single plank just to close the last bit of the gap off. I've switched over to the uh, taller pillar here, the uh, modified one from the barn tab, just because it gives me a little bit more reach. We'll sort of chop and change between the two, depending on what we need. You can lift that up, make sure it looks like it's sort of cut out to fit the stair and connects to the floor all the way around there. Not quite the same height, but... The end result is supposed to look somewhat improvised and slapdash, so it looks it looks reasonably solid and does the job. But we'll do when we get there. <laughs> so with this particular piece, it's a custom vanilla assets uh, vertical 90 degree angled plank. There's a few different lengths of styles. But we need a little bit of extra reach here, so we can grab a short section of conduit to extend our group select range so that the uh, post here isn't just hitting the junk fence at the bottom there. And just line it up. We'll be shoring it up a little more in a moment, so it should look a bit more secure. Back over to Toys Out of the Prams mod, we're going to use a little, a bit of a range of stuff here to get a collection of different pieces in here, make it look fairly improvised. One on the top, and another one just over the top of the gateway here. This one was, as you can see, slightly awkward, so I ended up spinning it around and working from the back as I was able to place the pillar a little bit closer there and it would actually group select, whereas it wasn't doing from the front side. That's why I left that bit of fiddling around in. I forgot to remove the conduit, apparently. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll remember later. Slide this into position, get it lined up so it looks like it's nailed onto the front. Feel sure there's no clipping going on. There we go. And one more board in the side, just to provide a little bit of extra support. There we go, neat and tidy. As to exactly how they're attached to the various bits and pieces, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, particularly where it's wood attached to metal, but we'll have to use our imaginations a little bit. It's uh, a limitation of the pieces we have available, I'm afraid. Such is life. So. Onto the top of the walls. I'm actually going to put three guard posts up here, but uh, they're all basically the same principle, so we'll focus on the first one and just take a look around the others in a moment. The idea here is to get an angle so that you can fire down on anybody who actually manages to make it up to the front door. So that's why we're coming across the corner here. These are quarry catwalk floor pieces. 
It's a few different styles. Those ones don't have any extra attachments, which is why we're dropping those in. I'm going to put a little roof over the top. we we'll retextured pieces from the metal tab here. I'm going to go with a slightly lower approach here. Keep the ceiling a bit lower. As long as we can get underneath it, it should feel right. And just feel a little more enclosed and claustrophobic. More like a, a guard post. Rather than a, a big open room. This is why we're group selecting here. Got it lined up with the edge there. And we're going to put some barn supports underneath. Because I wanted to go with metal rather than wood for this one. There are options in Toys Out of the Prams mod, but none of them quite fit for what I wanted. So as you see with the one on the left there, we're able to just drop it straight into place. This one, because it's floating there, I'll have to group select. And drop a couple more underneath just to uh, make sure it connects to the ground. For some reason, this half size or quarter size, whatever it is, shorter section wouldn't snap in. So I ended up switching over to the large one, which went in just fine. I'd say it makes a great deal of sense, but... Uh, because it has something to do with the rubble rather than the, the ground. So I wanted to use something a little different to put side walls onto this. So we're going to use these walls that are, again, USO added. They're under the general wall tab in uh, in the wooden shack uh, structures tab. So these don't snap, so we'll just group select them in. As you can see, I've pulled out a couple of the stone foundations there as... Uh, I was having an absolute nightmare trying to get this into place. It's an awful lot of fiddling that was very, very dull and got dropped on the cutting room floor there. One useful thing to bear in mind if you're going to pull those out, as I have done there, is just to double check before you do it. And just lift them out, and if they don't snap straight back in, just hit cancel and, they... and try and find another way of doing it. However, it works okay, so... So here, as you see, we've got a bit of floating. I'm just going to slide this plank underneath just to plug that little gap. For some reason, the rug glitch is not playing ball, so we're going to use the ashtrays. It'll snap straight to the floor. Use that as our anchor point and just group select the rug and then rug glitch that way. So we'll just get that lined up. There we go. Job's a good one. So at this end of the wall, I haven't actually used any of the metal posts because I wanted to put the wall in, uh, basically, this end of the roof, rather. So, just a little bit of rug glitch to get this in. I did try group selecting, but uh, no dice, as they say. However, a little bit of adjustment, and this should work just fine. There we go. So, as we saw last time, there's quite a few additions in recent weeks been made to uh, Aslam's uh, Workshop Junk Wall Pack. Um, this being one of the cool ones, I think I did actually use it to dress up the tent section last time, but we'll use it on here again. Provide a bit of cover from the side. Obviously that's going to need a little bit of adjustment, so we'll pull it back. It does end up with a bit of a gap there, but I don't mind too much. I just sort of anybody firing on them from a lot further away. Once they get close enough to actually fire from there, any attackers are going to be under fire from the guard posts anyway, so it's not too much of a problem. So, with these sandbags, they're easy enough to get into place. Actually, they cooperated quite willingly, which is a bonus, but uh, one of the things to bear in mind is this front edge. I want the defenders to be able to fire reasonably vertically, or reasonably close to the guard post. So if they're too tall, they won't be able to do that. In this case, the sandbags are just fine, but for the other two guard posts, I had to uh, make a few adjustments to make that possible. Another thing I forgot to do, or forgot to show rather, was that uh, I went on to add a couple of plywood boards on top of the quarry catwalks. Just because um, sort of anybody who's down below can see through from beneath, so I wanted to close off that particular firing angle. There we go. One slightly temperamental rug glitch later, and we have the sandbags in place. So, for some time I've been wondering how I'm going to put access to this um, artillery piece in the corner in, and I spotted this in the menus, which I hadn't uh, seen for some time. It's a little truck ramp, I decided to use that. It was Whether or not it's because I have scrap that settlement on or not, I'm not sure, but it was really quite uncooperative. We've actually pulled out one of the foundation pieces here. I'm going to put it on the side here because it's about the only place I can make it work. 
that with a little bit of persuasion, it's just straight group select this, because for some reason I couldn't get it to rug glitch. It might have worked if I'd used a much larger, larger rug, but then it would have gotten in the way of other parts of the build, so. Either way, there we go. I will be putting a, an extra board on the top there, just to make it look a little tidier. With this little shack walkway, though, as you see, I initially had it resting on the lengthwise boards and planks underneath. But although that looks a touch more realistic, there's a little step up as you walk across it that kind of... It's kind of jarring as you actually progress over it. So I've decided to pull it down and sink those in a little bit, even though it's not technically sort of a realistic or as realistic. It does work a little better. It's a little smoother, so... And I thought we needed a little fence here to stop people just kind of ambling right off the end of it. So we're using basically that same shack floor, but at 90 degrees. It's added by Toys Out of the Prams, Pillars and Supports again. We're just going to group select that in, rest that uh, horizontal beam on the floor, and there we go. Now we'll just get this lady to move off of her uh, artillery piece and we'll drop that back in. Right. That's the gist of the guard post. The other two that we're going to add are a little different, but they're all basically the same principle. So rather than just repeat myself, we're going to just take a look at the finished product. So we'll send her back over here. And there we go. Let's have a look around. Let's see, we've got plenty of angles to cover the approach from up there. Decided against turrets, partly because they're just extremely noisy, and partly because mm, I'm just not that big a fan anymore, apparently. Plus, guard posts are more interesting to build anyway. Open up and have a look inside. A little area for any uh, searches we need to do. I've yet to put any power in here, so the security light's not lit up. Yeah, make it a little bit more cosy, a little bit of decoration in there. Minimum and flag, somewhere for our guard to sit. You can imagine a shift in here will not be particularly stimulating for him. <laughs> Couple of uh, laser muskets in the corner. Little chest there for storing anything they happen to confiscate. We'll head round and take a look up top. So this is one of the ones I didn't show building. It's a little bit smaller, same principle. Uh, yeah, I didn't put a floor in this one just because of the angle on the ground anyway. As you can see, we've got plenty of cover. There's some sandbags across the front here. Now we're able to fire down onto the road reasonably easily. This side section here is from Aslam's junk, junk wall pack again. And I use that one because it's got a little bit of a curve to it, so we can sort of follow the edge of the castle wall a little better. Few tires in place, just add a little bit of extra texture. Actually, did decide to go with a uh, junk wall for this back edge, just for again something a little bit different. Uh, decals uh, need a little bit of work. Unfortunately, they don't snap to the back of it too cleanly, so I might pull those back out. Little table there, so then have a coffee while all's quiet. Bit of ammo storage, and as we can see. Can't fire quite vertically down here, but that's what the side po guard posts are for. Catch anybody who actually makes it that far in a crossfire. Yeah, a few more tyres to... Uh, and the cinder blocks there for a little bit of extra texture. I can see there, obviously, they're um, basically clipping through the foundations, which is a bit unfortunate with those tyres, but... If you lift them up, they're just cut off on the bottom as well, so it's going to look like that no matter what I do, unless I have them floating, which is a whole other problem. So, we just have to uh, assume they've been cut off, or well, the ones that appear to be clipping anyway. There are some other options, but you get basically the same problem in a different direction, so... I wanted a little bit of extra texture there, so... I like it. Simple, clean, and provides plenty of cover for the back. So, I've got a few more of these that I need to build to cover different angles, but I may or may not do a stream for that. I'm toying with the idea at the moment, but we'll see. 
Anyway, for now, thank you very much for watching. Do hope you enjoyed. If you did, do hit those buttons for me. It's always very much appreciated. Social media links is always down in the description. And I will be speaking to you all very, very soon. Thank you very much, guys.